Hey guys, welcome back. Schizone Series Lab 5. The goal of today's video is to implement a standalone executable uh, that dumps file contents to the screen in hex format, much like the hex dump or XXD tools you may have used in the past. This requires a buffer, basic file IO, minimal formatting, and like one fancy color. So very simple, but a very powerful and useful program. And very easy to do. And that's why I make these videos two reasons. One, it's easy, meaning I can do this video in just a matter of hours versus a regular video, which takes many more hours to set up. And I can work in the background on the next episode for the next week, because usually there's bigger things to do in the background. Um, and the other reason why I make these videos is because um, a lot of people are under the impression that you can't use assembly for full software development. And of course, these are very small toy problems, but we do make programs from the ground up in assembly in these videos live together using libraries written by a complete novice. So if I can do it, you can do it. And you can use the C libraries, you can use anything that you want. Um, you can make your own libraries. It's, uh, it's not impossible, it's very easy in fact, and that's why I enjoy doing it. So what is the goal today? Basically, have a program like dump, we're gonna make that. And you pass in the input file like binary and it dumps the binary. And you can see here, we've got uh, the address on the left. So it starts at zero, it goes up by 16 hex. Then it prints out 16 hex bytes of data followed by the ASCII representation of those 16 bytes. So binaries, you know, are ELF files on Linux, meaning they have this ELF magic number in the beginning of them. So you can see there, you know, that ASCII values of ELF are right here. So yeah, you also see some dots. Those are bytes for which their values are outside the readable character range on the ASCII table. But you will see things like class. What is class? I don't know. It's probably some instruction for which the opcodes and the operand happen to fall within the readable character range for ASCII characters. Um, but you will also see strings. And so if you were to dump a shell script or even our binaries, you'll see strings intermingled. Remember, we have a flat memory model where we intermingle our strings and our instructions and our data, like our vectors and stuff are all jumbled together. And so you will see strings here for our programs. You won't see those for modern software because they, they break it apart. They have a code segment and a data segment, right? So they break those things apart. I think, could be wrong about that. Um, only a few functions to use for this. Uh, one is to open that input file, file open. One is to read characters from that input file, read characters. Um, print characters, that prints things, in this case to the screen. So we'll print out basically the colon, all the spaces, and then these characters here. Then we'll have uh, this most important include, which is print int h n digits, that prints an integer in hex format, for which we always wanna see exactly the low eight digits. So for example, the addresses, you know, address 10 is 16 in, in, in decimal, but uh, we are printing out six leading zeros. We're specifying, yeah, print the number 16, but print out eight digits worth. And so that's what happens here. Similarly, you see 00, 0F, 0, 0, 05, 04, 02, 01, 03, all those. Those are same thing. We're specifying, hey, I always want to see two characters. Otherwise, you wouldn't have that leading zero. So we can keep everything in nice, neat columns. So yeah, that's it. Last include is just exit, which is just to leave the program. So I recommend you follow along if you'd like. If not, that's fine by me. Uh, if you get this suppository off SoyHub, you can just take this. Um, you get all this, you can run make bin, so you get that bin directory. And then in the bin directory, you'll have a couple of binaries that we use. So make executable, we use that executable to turn our assembled binaries from read, write to read, write, execute. So that's that's our CH mod basically. And then we also have list, that's just LS. And then we have dump, that's today's program that we're using, um, that we're making. And so it's only 773 bytes, so it's a very small, binary, but it does work. So I can type in um, dump 
uh, bin spawn. And you can see it's dumping that spawn executable to the screen and spawn is like touch. Uh, so that's what it does, but you can see this prints out all that to the screen. And uh, how does 700 bytes or more like 800 bytes, how does that compare with the regular utilities that you might use? Well, we can word count user bin, I think it's in user bin, hex dump. So ours is 773 bytes. This one happens to be 51,000 bytes. Uh, and then what about XXT? A little bit smaller, I imagine. Yeah, 22 and a half thousand bytes. So obviously they have more features, but the core functionality is ultimately the same, right? If I do XXD um, bin spawn, uh, oh, sorry, wrong, wrong bin. It's the same output you can see. So their output versus my output, it's more or less the same thing. So we'll get into this today. If that seems interesting, I recommend you follow along on your own computer. If not, that's fine. We can uh, see you in the next video. So I recommend, well, what I do is I do this all in the, in the lab directory. So CD lab, all the labs are here, including the lab from today, which is hex dump lab five. But we're gonna copy the template and make a new directory here. We'll copy template to dump. Now I'll CD dump for and we will take a look at what we have here. So we will uh, look inside. Oh my God, I'm so dumb, dude. So first things first, we have this shell script that you probably know, know by now, but this basically has NASM called. It turns our code into a binary. Then we run that make executable on the binary, or you can use a chmod if you'd like and then it runs the binary. In our case, we're gonna read a file. So I'm gonna pass in a file name here that we can just read just for the time being. So I'm gonna pass in the shell script itself. So we're gonna run the binary on this file. So we'll print out the hex contents of this file. And then in the code, this is a very minimal code, um, just a bare bones template. You can see one include is exit, and we are just leaving the program with a return value of zero. So if I run this, it is going to return a value of zero. So what I usually do is I usually try to snag a previous example that does almost what we wanna do, or at least parts of it, and I copy and paste from that. And so I'm gonna do that. I did find one just today, this morning, I found Nyancat. We wrote this back in episode four, but it does a lot of the same stuff. Same includes open print characters, read characters. It even has this. We could use that to print out the color, but I don't want to. Um, and then, yeah, a lot of the same type of, you know, command line arguments as well. So I'm gonna copy this one into our, well, into our new program. So open up code and we're gonna open up, a, it's under example, example four, uh, I can't see example four, example four D uh, code. So we'll snag these includes. So let me snag all of this. This print buffer flush is actually a dependency of print characters. So I'm not gonna grab that, but you could. Paste you here. Um, we won't use this one, but we will use print int h n digits. I'm not gonna put in the, uh, the C syntax or whatever, but We'll just know that this is the other include. And what do we do first? So the first thing is gonna be, well, let's copy some more stuff. Let's copy the command line arguments to the, the, the new procedure. So I'm gonna snag you, I'm gonna snag all this, I guess. Thank you very much. That's probably all we need. That's gonna be to just check our command line arguments that we're pulling in. So what does this do? This checks argc. So we're gonna compare the byte at argc, this is a a macro or whatever that we defined um, with the value two. So the this is the number of arguments that you've passed in on the command line. So the first one is the program name itself. Second name is their input file. So we're saying, hey, if you didn't pass in two, you're dumb and your your program's not gonna work. So jump to fail. So let's put a fail down here. We'll, we'll just return the value of uh, of zero. Jump non equal, we're gonna say fail. Okay, then we have this, this is gonna basically open up the input file. So we're gonna take the value off of the stack, the address of the null terminated string. We're gonna grab that 
and uh, pass this into file open. I do usually pass in another thing here. It's, I can do that back then, but I pass in default permissions. Um, and I'm just going to say permissions. Permissions. And that will be an RDX. And then uh, call file open, that's fine. And then normally, so this basically opens the file and returns the file descriptor in RAX. And I usually save that in a register. I'll put it in R15, it's the highest one I'm gonna have today. So we'll use that and that'll be good. And the last thing to do is going to be just to check if we've actually opened a file or not. So I think my file open returns a, a zero or a negative number if it's an error message or you're, it's not a real file. So let's compare RAX against zero. And if it's less than or equal to, we'll jump to fail. So there's two cases that you can fail so far. One is you didn't pass in an input argument, or you passed in too many input arguments, or you um, your file is bogus. So you passed in something that's not a file. You passed in lol, it's not a file. So yep, there's that. And then we'll have a loop. So we'll loop through addresses. And so let's do this first. Let's track the address in, we'll use R14. So we're gonna basically be counting up the address. So from zero hex to 10 hex, 20 hex, 30 hex, we'll do that in R14. And uh, we'll have our loop that loops through. And we're gonna loop forever. So we're going to jump to loop. Just, just humor me for a minute. And I'm gonna knock, I'm gonna risk for now, I'm gonna comment this all out. And we'll look at that later. And let's just print out the addresses. So to print the addresses, uh, what do we do? We have to move into RDI the output, like terminal file descriptors. We have that in sys entered out. And we're trying to call basically that print int h and digits. That includes for that one, I remember uh, RSI is the number of interests. So that's going to be the address. And that we're tracking in R14. I'm going to put a comment there so you know address. And we're Gonna pass it in R14, so we'll say move that one. And then how many digits do you want? RDX equals eight. So we'll always have eight digits there. Print it out. Then we'll print out a colon. Now comes the grammar. So let's think about the grammar. We can do that right now. That'll be quick and easy. For our output, I like to look at what kind of strings we want. So we want a colon followed by a space. We do want just a space by itself. That could be embedded inside this one. And we also want two spaces here, Here, I think that's two spaces. But also, um, I think there's gonna be a case where we wanna have three spaces at a time, also a new line character at the end of each line, slash n. Um, so I'm gonna say our grammar ought to be, give me a second here. And I always put the grammar at the bottom just to, to keep it here. So we'll say dot grammar, and I include all the symbols we need for what we're working on. So I say db, We'll say colon space, that's for the first one. We'll have two more spaces for the, when we have to have three in, the, in a chunk, and then we'll have a new line character. So that'll be five bytes total, not gonna be too bad. Um, and we can be efficient with that right here. So I'm gonna print out next the colon and the space. So let's move RSI um, grammar. So the address of grammar is where our colon is, and then we're gonna print out two characters, move rdx to call print cares. Then uh, the new line, put that one down here. So I'm gonna copy the same exact thing. And I believe that new line was at off offset four, so we'll say rsi grammar plus four, print out one new line, and that's this. So we'll say this prints new line, this one prints colon space, and this one prints the address. So if we do this, it will loop forever. Unfortunately, um, we have to flush the print buffer to see this. I'm gonna put that here just so you can see. I'm going to call print buffer flush, but normally we're not gonna put that in the loop. We're gonna put that outside the loop. We'll put that at the bottom. So I'll put that right, uh, put that right here maybe, looks like done move RDI, sysstandard out, call print buffer flush. 
We're gonna to jump to this when we finish the parsing. So I'll put a move RDI here. This is in case RDI ha happens to be clobbered when I jump here. This function takes an input RDI. It's already gonna be set, right? Think about that. RDI is already set in this case, but in general, we can't guarantee it's gonna be set when we jump to this address. So we'll set it again. But yeah, let's see how this works. If it works, if I run this, it prints out zeros. Why is that? I didn't increase the address because I'm an idiot. So we'll, in here, we'll say, add r1416 and that will basically loop through the next address here so let's run this now you can see now it's counting up by hex 16s up and up and up with eight characters of hexadecimal followed by colon followed by space followed by a new line so that's the first third of our program done congratulations it's something so hard isn't it uh next thing is going to be the actual bytes themselves. Well, actually, it's going to be reading bytes. So let's do that. Let's read in some some stuff. I'm going to get. Well, I'll keep you. You look nice, and I'll keep you. I'll put that in a different register. I'll put it in maybe R12. Let's see. We'll, we'll think about that later. Um, R15 is our file descriptor for the input. And see here, we've clobbered RDI. That's why I always like to specify RDI whenever I print out stuff. So you don't have to do this, but I like to always reset that. Uh, and in fact, our ABI that we're using is, hey, all functions preserve all registers. Normally you'd have to reset everything every time. That's not one of the preserved, you know, saved, what they call callie or caller saved registers. So, but for us, everything is saved. So anyway, either way, I'm going to put the RDI value back here at the bottom. Okay, very cool. Um, this will now read our bytes from our input file into something called read buffer. But we don't have that. I'm going to make a new buffer. We'll call it call it dot buffer, and we'll read in 16 characters, 16 bytes. So we'll say 16 call read characters, blah blah blah. And uh, before I get any further, let's quickly check. So read characters. When we get to the end of the file, it will return out zero characters. I'm going to compare. Uh, rex zero, and if it's somehow less than or equal to zero, if it's some kind of error message, we'll jump to done. And that will be where our program ends, right here, done, and that'll be the flush. So I'm now gonna delete out this print flush, and we'll keep that one. Now our program actually terminates naturally, otherwise it would loop forever, we have a jump loop, so it jumps back to the top otherwise. So now we have a condition which our loop terminates. Okay, what is next? Um, Oh, buffer doesn't exist. So let's make a buffer. We'll put it down right here. So we'll say buffer. And instead of had to be 16 bytes, right? We're reading 16 bytes at a time. So we'll say times 16 db0. We're going to define uh, 16 zero bytes to begin with in memory. And it, by the way, it's going to always be there. We'll always have in our binary 16 bytes of zeros, which you might say, hey, that's a waste of bytes on our, on our hard drive. Yeah, it is. Um, you could move this into load memory uh, if you really wanted to, I'm not going to do that, but you could potentially put that in right here. This is the segment loaded in memory. So you could, if you wanted to, you can embed that in. I'm not going to do that, but whatever, you can figure it out. Um, anyway, so we now read that into a buffer and yeah, so that's that. Let's see what happens now. So it will, the same thing will happen, but now it will terminate when it runs to the end of the file. Let's just make sure. Okay. So yeah, if you look, um, Oh my God, our, <laughs> there's my cat. Anyway, um, our, our program has uh, 179 bytes. So yeah, that probably matches up with that zero C zero hex address there. So yeah, we printed out some number of bytes now. I, it doesn't go on forever. It just runs until the number of bytes read are consumed. So very cool. Our program now is not running forever. Let's go back in. Now we have to figure out how to print the actual hex bytes. We'll do that right here. So what do we do, what do we do? So um, R12 is number of bytes read and it will normally be 16, right? Because we're gonna read in 16 characters. However, the very last couple of characters, last like less than 16, it, it won't be 16. And so we save that value in R12. And so we're gonna loop through, um, I call it a byte loop because we're looking through the bytes, byte loop one. 
and we're gonna loop through. And by the way, all my loops, for me personally, and most people, they put a loop counter in RCX, and they just decrement RCX, and then jump non-zero to the, to the loop. That basically means we're gonna loop through until we count down from our counter variable. So we'll jump on zero byte loop one, and then we will set RCX. So we're, we're gonna print out however many bytes that we read in, and that's an R12, so we'll say move RCX R12. And uh, where are we reading from? We're moving, we're reading from um, some place, I guess we'll use R13 for this, um, and that's the buffer. Remember, we've read it into the buffer, and we're just gonna iterate through the buffer, reading each byte and writing it out as a hex file, as a hex value. So that's this. So what are we printing? Well, we're gonna print out the hex digit itself followed by a space. I'm gonna copy this right down here, paste it in. This prints the hex value and we'll have to change this number, but we will then print out a space. So we'll say print out space, grammar plus one, one byte. Cause this is the offset of one byte away from that colon. And now it's just a space and we're printing out one space in between each character. And so that will print out that. And uh, okay, so the actual value itself, it's not in R14, it's actually, it's at the address in R13, and that's actually a byte. And I'm not sure you can do this, but I'm pretty sure you have to do move zero extend. Maybe not, maybe that would work. Maybe SIL, no, no. No, let's just do this. Let's just move zero extend. That's probably the safest thing to do. Um, the byte at R13, and then we'll print out eight of, oh no, two characters followed by a space. Then we decrement RCX, jump on zero, Byte loop one. Uh, this should now print out all of the bytes, unless I'm an idiot, which I very well may be. Let's run this. Cool. Oh, hold on. That's not right, is it? Oh, no, it's not, because we didn't increment through. So we'll go back in, and we have to increment through our R13. So we'll increment, oh, sorry. I have to increment first, because the flag is set by uh, the most recent thing you've done, and so I have to put increment for decrement because this is our loop counter. So anyway, increment R13, we'll loop through our buffer uh, one by a time, one at a time, decrementing our counter as we go and then leave. You could, honestly, you could do this in a single register. You could say, hey, jump, until, or, sorry, continue until the buffer meet, meets buffer plus 16 or something. Um, that would be more efficient register wise, but I don't care, we have plenty to spare. So that all works. Let's now run this. You can see now we do have the hex values of our file done on the screen. It's straight up finished. We've got it. So we're done. The only thing is um, we need to process something about the last line. We'll do that maybe later, but then let's do the actual string part now. That's the, the most fun one. So let's figure that out back in the code. So we have this byte loop one and not inside of a loop, but next to the loop, we'll have byte loop two. Actually, I need this first couple stuff as well. I'm gonna snag all of this. We're gonna repeat the same loop over the same buffer, but instead of uh, printing out as a hex, we'll print out as ASCII. So we will do this. Uh, let me just delete you and you. So yeah, we'll move. Is it... Uh, We'll keep this. We don't need you anymore. Um, okay, so now it's a question of, remember we're trying to print out the ASCII, oh, hold on. The ASCII things here. And if it's a readable character, we print out a readable character. If it's not, we print out this red dot. And so to do that, let's see an ASCII table. I do have one pulled up just for this. And readable characters looks like they start at 32. The first one is decimal 32 and they go to 126 the squiggle. And so if it's less than 32 or above 126, hey, print out the red dot. Otherwise, print out the ASCII value. So let's do that. Um, so we will compare. So we'll say compare RSI 32, jump less than, we'll make a, a label for that. And if it's also greater than 126, we'll also jump to bogus jump greater than bogus. Otherwise, we'll print out the the value. So we'll say move, again, we can, we'll just say move RSI, the address R13, yeah. Print out a single byte, 
call print cares. So we're printing out one byte at a time. Again, we're not actually printing it one byte at a time. That would be very slow. We're buffering one byte at a time. So it's way, way faster than doing it with the syscall. We're buffering and then outputting it after the fact. So yeah, this will print out the print uh, ASCII. No more space required. We're having them all be touching. Uh, then we'll loop through just the same. Of course, it has to be a new loop name. We can't use the same loop name, so we'll say buffer or byte loop two, byte loop two. Okay, now what about bogus? So for bogus, we have to define something. I'll put it here at the bottom, I guess. We'll have a bogus, uh, like a little, little procedure down here, bogus. This will handle whenever something is bogus. You can put it inside. I don't really care for that. We'll, it's such a small program, it doesn't matter. We're not gonna be jumping across boundaries or nothing, I don't think. Um, Maybe we will, I, I have no idea, honestly. Um, but let's just see. So let's define our bogus byte. And this is where the colors come in, because I made it a red color. And we could have included the entire ANSI formatting, you know, code that we have from previous video. But why bother? It's extra bloat for no reason. Let's just hard code the color red into this. So the color red, I believe it's the escape code. It's 31M. Then you put in the character you want for the bogus byte. You can do maybe question mark, you can put exclamation mark, you put a dot, I don't know, up to you. I'm putting a dot, I guess, followed by the code to reset the color because it's gonna turn the, turn the every color from here on out, every character is gonna be this color. So we'll make every character from here on out red, print the character, and then print every character from here on out the default. And the default is, I believe, uh, escape zero M. And so that's that. And how many bytes is this? Normally you would say, oh, how many bytes would I have to print out? Is this seven, eight, nine? I have no idea. We can we can actually calculate that in uh, in the assembler. So in, in bogus, oh, actually, hold on. I'm doing this wrong. Um, this is not the, uh, this is actually not where I'm gonna put bogus. This is gonna be the bogus bytes. Yeah. And then we're gonna actually process the bogus byte in here. So I'm going to move RDI, sys, Standard out. Again, don't have to do that, but I will right here because it's probably going to already be this value, but just to be safe. And we'll move RSI, the bogus byte. Then we're going to move RDX some number of characters, and then we're going to call print cares. And then we're going to jump back into next, and we'll put next somewhere here, I guess. Yep, that makes sense to me because we're gonna skip over, basically, if we're not printing an ASCII character, we're gonna print a bogus character. And now the question is, how big is this bogus character gonna be, byte-wise? We can count the number of bytes, but I'm not sure how this works with escape characters and stuff, so we're just going to calculate that. So we'll say, um, what is it? It's gonna be buffer minus bogus byte. That will compute the distance between the addresses, buffer and bogus byte. And that should be like, I don't know, like nine or 10, I don't know. Okay, cool. That puts us in here and all those will come out. Let's see if this works. I'm not sure if this is gonna work. Let's uh, let's take a look. Okay, look at that. We're almost done. <clears throat> we have, yeah, we basically have the entirety of the addresses done. We have the entirety of the hex values done. Well, almost. The ASCII is in there, done. You can see we have printed out our entirety of our uh, run shell script right there on the right-hand side. Um, all the ASCII values are there. The, the new line characters are actually dots because they're not in the principal range we defined. We said principal characters are gonna be between 32 and 126. New lines are somewhere here, like around here-ish. Carriage return, right, or whatever new line, line feed, all those, 10, right? Yeah, there it is, 10. Yeah, so you see we have, uh, no, it's zero A, so it, yeah, it, it is third, wait, yeah, it's, it's 10, sorry, 10. Zero A is 10, and that is this new line feed ASCII definition. So yeah, you see that. Only problem is you see the SH, the SH at the bottom, that is the last three characters of our shell script, SH new line, um, or end of file, whatever it happens to be. No, it, it's a new line. And the question is, wh why is it there? Well, because we didn't specify the proper spacing for the very last line. We're only printing out three bytes, three spaces, and that happens to be where the SH falls. 
So we have to figure out a way to, to buffer that out. But also I noticed that there's, I wanted to put a gap between an extra, an extra space gap between the bytes and the ASCII. So let's add that in really quick. Vim code in between the two, we're going to print out one extra byte. So we'll say print out space. We'll just copy this down to the bottom right here, print space. That will add an extra space for us, I believe. Yep, one extra space in between the ASCII and the hex. Okay, let's go back in and take a look at our processing for this. Okay, basically after the characters have been printed, the hex characters have been printed, we want to see if we can print some extra spaces. So I'm gonna make an extra space loop, extra spaces loop. And we'll again, we'll decrement RCX, jump non-zero, extra spaces loop. And we'll, we'll do that. Uh, and we have to now define what RCX is. So remember, we've printed out R12 bytes. R12 is usually 16. So we'll say, you know what, move RCX 16, subtract from RCX the value in R12, and then print that many spaces out so that we will um, basically, I can just copy the same thing, right? Copy you up here. That should print some extra spaces. But now we're not printing out one space, we're printing out three spaces, I believe. So we'll say three. We'll run this now and see what happens. It goes on forever. What did I do wrong? Um, oh, I have to, this doesn't always happen, right? We don't always run this. In fact, this is always gonna loop forever because we started at zero. So anyway, um, what we'll do is we will compare. So I'm gonna compare R12 comma 16 if it equals, if we've read 16 bytes from our file descriptor, that means it's, we don't need, we don't need any extra spaces. So I'm gonna jump, oops, jump equal to, we'll say skip. We'll put skip down here. Otherwise we're in here and we run through. Perfect. The only question I have is why so yeah we had now we have our, our spacing working out for the very last line why do we have that c0 thing at the very bottom what have i done wrong um let me check byte loop two print cares print new line jump to loop let's see is my condition here correct jump loop maybe it's just less Compare REX zero. Is that what I have? I have my cheat sheet from before. Jump less than equal to z done. That's that's correct. Uh, okay, done. We print the address XOR R fourteen. Hold on, let me go through this from, from the top. So we read in this, our X invalid inputs, set it to zero. We're looping through from zero. We're going through now. Okay, great. Print out the address, eight characters of which, fine. Move into R12, the value at RIX. I can move that up if I want, just to make it more, more straightforward. Uh, okay, compare RIX to zero. Is that what I have? It is jump less than equal to done. And then I am Hmm. Oh, oh, okay, hold on, hold on. The address has to be in Oh, I put it at the bottom. Why did I do that? Hold on. Where is my 8? It's in the loop. Is that where it should be? Yeah. Oh no. Ah, I'm so dumb. We have to read characters first. Why did I do that? Oh, do we? Oh, we do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This has to happen first. Otherwise, we run the risk of printing out an extra address. See, I made a mistake. So 
So we'll say yeah, read characters from input file. Yep, we'll delete this line. Yep, that should fix everything. Yep, there you go. So now we have the ability to, so we now have a binary, right? Our binary is here. It, in this case, it's 783. So a couple extra bytes of moving RDI <laughs> around. So that's fine. We can get, kill that out if you want, but I'm not really interested in that. Um, and yeah, we can run this binary on anything. How about on the code? This is our code. The entire code we just wrote being printed out to the screen. You can see move RSI bogus byte, move RDX buffer, whatever, all that stuff. So yeah, our program is done. It works. We have the ability to print out the addresses, all the hex bytes, nice formatting in columns, followed by the ASCII values. And you can see all our new lines, all our characters in there. So yeah, we have a fully functional piece of software and we did that in only a few minutes. How long did that take? It's been uh, around half an hour. So yeah, for all the naysayers that you can't do software and assembly quick and easy, they're wrong. I mean, you can totally do it. Um, is it as easy as C? Of course not, um, but it's definitely usable. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.